Hi, um, okay, um, I'll see you in the lounge room. Okay, that was a little bit too weird. Um, how about from now on you guys just wait for me in here and um, we'll organise the cool title screen uh, for, for the videos and we'll not have you guys finding me doing things anymore so we don't run into that sort of situation again. Anyway, um, this time around, uh, just a couple of things to start out with. Um, first of all, there's been some discussion on the YouTube uh, channel about the differences between uh, the game that I'm playing, which is the UK version of HeroQuest, and the US version of HeroQuest. Now, the UK version, I believe, and I could be wrong here, but I believe it came out first, um, and it has uh, it's slightly different rules to the US version. The US version, some of the monsters have more body points. The whole reason this discussion came up was because uh, the mummy only has one body point in the UK version, whereas in the US version it has two. Um, so, and there's also a few other differences, such as uh, there's chaos spells which uh, the the uh, evil wizard player gets to cast, uh, and some other things they get. There's a few different differences. Um, if, if you have a look on the um, Board Game Geek uh, page for Hero Quest uh, in the components section, you'll see that there's um, quite a few differences listed there. Um, secondly, I almost would be uh, able to have an unboxing again this, this, this week, but unfortunately it's not my birthday yet and uh, Catherine has bought me um, a board game uh, for my birthday, so I know what's in the box, but I'm not allowed to open it because I've still got another two weeks to wait till my birthday. So, uh, it will get unboxed not during a video, um, it's, it's, it's Pandemic and, uh, and the expansion on the brink, um, which I'm very much looking forward to playing, I've, I've had my eye on this game for quite a while, um, so maybe a future video series will we'll, uh, we'll play this game. So that's it for the introduction this week, we'll move straight back over to the game, um, probably for the last time, so I'll see you over at the board. And welcome back to Mellar's Maze for what will most likely be the last time. So we'll start as we always do with Elroyce. He's decided that he wants to move up into the centre room and search for treasure. So he moves up into the room and searches for treasure. So he pokes around in the corners, uh, moves through the dust and the and the cobwebs and searches all over the, the bookcase. And uh, in a little, small compartment underneath the uh, the table in the centre of the room, he discovers what they've been searching for since they entered, the Talisman of Law. The Talisman allows you to increase your mind points by two as long as you have the Talisman in your possession. And that completes the objective of the mission. They have now discovered the Talisman, so they uh, all the heroes uh, meet together and, uh, and leave the dungeon via the way they came, having successfully uh, found the treasure. So well done to uh, my four players. They have successfully finished Melar's maze and uh, yeah I'll see you back over on the couch for a wrap up. And that's Hero Quest. Um, I hope you enjoyed uh, watching the videos as much as I enjoyed making them. Um, what I'd like to do now is just a little bit of a wrap up. Um, so there's been a few questions from people throughout the series um, as to you know I like the game or wow your, co your copy of the game is in really good condition where can I get um, a copy of the game from. So I've done a little bit of research for the people who are uh, who are interested. So um, if you head onto the Board Game Geek website, there's a Board Game Geek Marketplace, um, and that actually has uh, copies of most games that you'll find on there for sale by uh, by members of the Board Game Geek community. Um, I had a bit of a, a bit of a poke around, and uh, sort of you're looking starting at around the sixty dollar mark um, and going up from there, depending upon the quality of the game, you can get them there. There's also, uh, Board Game Geek also has a really fantastic service where you can trade copies of games with other users for other games that you're interested in. Um, and there's a few uh, people on there, in fact there's approximately about 400 according to the website, people on there who are looking to trade their copy of Hero Quest for something else. So you should definitely be able to um, sort out something there if you're interested. Um, there's also uh, quite a lot of listings on eBay as well for the game. Um, yeah, there's there's a lot of there's a lot of listings for parts, so you can go on there and get, you know, if you've broken your barbarian in half somehow, you can get yourself another another barbarian. Or there's a lot of 
bits and pieces of the furniture and things like that that you can get. Um, if, if you keep your eye on eBay for a while, you normally will be able to pick yourself up a, a copy quite cheaply. That's where I got my copy from. Um, mine, I think, set me back $35 Australian. So, um, you know, if, if you keep watching it, you'll, you'll, get, a, you'll get a bargain eventually. Um, there's also uh, Amazon. If you look on Amazon, there's also a fair few uh, listings on there. So that's where you can go if you're really keen on the game and you want to pick up a copy for yourself. So if you like the game, you can't find it, or say for example, you like the game but you've already got it, um, or you like the idea of the game but not specifically HeroQuest, there are a few other options around for you. Um, that The time uh, that, that HeroQuest came out, sort of the late 80s, early 90s, was a really big time for this style of board game, so there was a lot of one player versus many players uh, style of board games where uh, in the same vein as HeroQuest. So if, you, if, you, if you're in the market for one, have a look out. There's games such as um, Advanced HeroQuest, um, which obviously is very similar to HeroQuest, just with more, more in-depth rules. Um, they actually have a modular board, much like um, some of the games that you've seen from Dungeons & Dragons recently. So say like uh, Castle Ravenloft or uh, Wrath of the Shadowlong, those type of games that has a modular board similar to that. Um, there's also uh, new rules for combat, more complicated rules for combat, and the, uh, the spellcasters have a wider range of spells to choose from. So that's advanced hero quest. Again, these, these first few games that I'm going to list are of the same era, so they're going to be still difficult to find because they're not in print anymore. Um, so Warhammer Quest was another one that came out several years uh, after, uh, which is a similar style of game, but it it's similar in theme and the way it plays, except that it's not one versus many, it's uh, everybody co-op against the game itself. Again, much like the uh, the D and D style of games that have come out recently. Uh, there's also Dragon Strike, uh, which is a very similar game to Hero Quest, um, except that you instead of just using six-sided dice, it's got a lot of the more complicated dice in it, eight-sided and ten-sided and things like that. Um, and the other major difference is that instead of just having one game board like Hero Quest does, it actually comes with several that you can uh, switch out and uh, and use. Now I don't mean for this to be an exhaustive list, it's just some ideas of, uh, of, of ways you can go. Um, the main issue you run into is actually trying to find these style of games that are being produced now, that are actually being made now. So um, the only real game that's in, or the closest thing that's in production nowadays would probably be Descent, um, Journeys in the Dark, which I've never played myself. Um, I've only read about it, um, but apparently it is quite similar, it's um, just a lot more in depth, there's a lot more going on in it. Um, but I'd say probably the closest thing for me, and um, definitely it was a gateway, this game was a, was a gateway for me, was, uh, would be actually Dungeons & Dragons. Um, specifically Dungeons & Dragons 4th edition, the, new, the newest edition, not the new one that's going to be coming out. But um, the, again, it's, it, it's a lot more complicated than HeroQuest and um, it's going it's to set you back a bit more than probably picking yourself up a copy of HeroQuest off the, uh, off the net. Um, but Dungeons and Dragons has the depth uh, that a lot of people are looking for, and it it play it can play very similarly to uh, to Hero Quest in terms of one person versus uh, everybody else who's playing. So um, Dungeons and Dragons is definitely an option. If you like Hero Quest but don't like the theme of Hero Quest, then you could always go for some of the other um, uh, Games Workshop games that were out at the time, uh, specifically the space ones. Uh, space Crusade is one example. Um, space Crusade sort of the uh, ancestor of Space Hulk, it, turned, it became Space Hulk later on. Um, so if, you, if you're interested in this game, there are a lot of other videos out there uh, showing, showing this game off. Um, again, it's slightly different because it, it's, this is only really a two-player game and it's uh, one person playing the, the Gene Stealers and one person playing the, uh, the Marines. Uh, but similar, similar style of game. So I know you're out there saying, but Tinny, I already own the game and I've played it to death, what can I do now? So in that case, there are a few other options for you as well. So one of them, you could, if you're really lucky, track down one of the expansions. So um, I've got two of them. Uh, this is uh, Return of the Witch Lord and this is uh, Kellar's Keep. Um, they add extra monsters, a few other different things to the game, um, give you new scenarios to play out. 
Um, because they add more, more monsters, you can have more monsters on the board at the same time, new terrain pieces. Um, they also expand the actual board itself uh, in some cases, so um, these are really good if you can find them. Again, they're probably even harder to find than the base game because there was a lot less of the expansions uh, made than there were of the base game. That's uh, one thing you can do. Um, the other thing you can do is actually DIY yourself uh, some, more, some more content. So, as I said when I was explaining the game, the adventure book comes with a, a blank canvas essentially inside for you to create your own adventures. Um, if you feel like you're being restricted by the, uh, by the game board, then there's always other options available. Um, what I found works really well, um, Dungeons & Dragons put out a, uh, a series of, uh, of game tiles. So you can actually get these and they pop out, they're just, and they're in the same scale as the board, uh, the, the one inch square. So you, um, it comes with a whole series of, of different uh, things that you can modulate together, and completely modular, so you can just sit them next to each other and um, sit them on the table and make yourself a, a new dungeon. Um, that's always an option for you. Um, or, if you really want to, there are um, vinyl mats available in, uh, in squares that you just uh, write on with permanent marker or there you go, there is actually still some written on that from last time we played. Um, so these are just water, water based um, markers that you can uh, rub off once you're finished with it. These are also a really good investment if you're going to be playing more of this style of game. Uh, yeah, definitely worth your while. And what if you're in the camp who for some reason have continued watching this video series all the way through? and you're saying, Tinny, I don't really like HeroQuest at all, what about me? Well, you can stay tuned for the next video, uh, where we, we will be starting to play Scotland Yard, which is a completely different style of game. Um, I'm actually looking for players for this now, so if you get onto the uh, Google Plus uh, website, which is linked in the description below, um, there'll be a thread on there where I'm asking you to uh, tell me what the name of your Bobby would be, your London police officer and the most interesting names we get, um, I'll be looking to you guys for, uh, for players for this game. So please uh, check that out if you're interested. And well, that uh, just about wraps up HeroQuest uh, completely. So I'd like to take this opportunity to thank my players. Um, so thank you, Adam, uh, who was playing Elroyce. Thank you, Kaz, who was playing uh, Lothario. Thank you, uh, Michael, the... Uh, the mighty Michael, as he asked me to call him, uh, who's playing Wilhelm, and thank you Nathan who was playing um, Barabel. I, uh, I hope you guys enjoyed it. My name's Tinny, and I'll see you next time for the next Tortuga.